Upon first glance, this looks like a perfectly normal last generation 15 inch Retina MacBook Pro. There's pretty much nothing special about it, or so it seems. Take a closer look and you'll notice a sticker with the serial number printed on it on the side of the device, and a QR code on the top case next to the hinge. But things get really weird when you take the bottom case off of this device. Yeah, really weird. This is unlike any MacBook you've ever seen before. Today's video is sponsored by Gosund, makers of affordable smart home devices. Their smart plugs and smart bulbs are a cost-effective way to make your home more convenient with Alexa and Google Home voice control, as well as seamless integration through the smartphone app. With the Gosund app, you can easily adjust the color and brightness of their smart bulbs. You can also link multiple bulbs to adjust them as a group. With so much customization, you could use them to create an ambiance in a gaming room or as a reading or bedside table light. You can even schedule automation to have the lights wake you up in the morning and then turn off when you go to sleep at night. Plus, all of this is super easy and controlled right on your phone. Like that. You can also use the smart plug to control conventional appliances with ease. These connect on any 2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi network to set up groups and timers. For example, you could use them to connect a network of string lights that would ordinarily not have smart capabilities, and you can also use it to turn off appliances that you don't want sapping power overnight. You can find links to Gosund products in the description below. A pack of four smart bulbs comes in at under $30, and a two pack of smart plugs is just 16. And now, back to the video. All right, so what the heck is going on here? Well, as you may have guessed by now, and I'm sure the title has informed you, this is no ordinary MacBook Pro. What it is, is a very early prototype of what later became known as the best MacBook Pro ever made, the mid-2015 15-inch Retina MacBook Pro. If you came across this MacBook in a recycling center, however, you'd have no idea what exactly it is. That's because if you open up the About This Mac pane, there's really nothing to go by. It just says that it's a Mac with a 2 GHz Core i5, 8 GB of RAM, and null in place of the serial number. Wait, hang on a second. Core i5? Yeah. If you didn't think that this was a special computer, that really seals the deal. No 15-inch Retina MacBook Pro has ever shipped with a Core i5, yet that's what this machine supposedly has. At least that's what shows up in the About This Mac pane. There's a lot of question marks with this device, as its configuration obviously doesn't match anything you could ever find. One interesting tidbit that I almost completely missed on this computer is that the RAM is 1867 megahertz. That was never put in a 15 inch MacBook Pro. All of the retinas of this generation had 1600 megahertz and then after that the touch bar went to 2133 and then on to DDR4. The only Macs that ever shipped with 1867 megahertz were some of the iMacs, the 13 inch 2015 MacBook Pro, as well as the trash can Mac Pro. So definitely weird on that front. Also, even though the Mac reports that it has a Core i5 installed, when I ran Unigen Heaven to see how the graphics are, they're bad by the way, it showed up as a Core i7-4750HQ, which is the same as the base model late 2013 MacBook Pro. So you may ask, given that this computer has no configuration that matches anything that ever went on sale, how do I know that it's a prototype for the mid-2015? Well, this MacBook Pro has a work in progress, very much pre-production, force touch trackpad. And it's hilariously bad. It's kind of tough to show it on camera, but the calibration is super weird. There's also no secondary click, so it just clicks a single time, you can't force press, and it feels mushy and weird. 
Also, the tracking is awful. It feels like there's no driver, and when you move the mouse around the screen, it's really jerky and almost impossible to use. In the system preferences pane, it doesn't even show up as a trackpad at all. It has no multi-touch gestures or any adjustments whatsoever. In fact, there's more evidence to suggest this computer is very early stages because the function keys aren't even mapped to their assigned buttons. For example, you might want to turn up the volume, so you'd go to press the volume up key. Yeah, it, go it goes over to the dashboard because it's not mapped properly. So with all this weirdness and the very cool red logic board telling us that this is a very unusual MacBook, I decided to do some digging to find out anything I could about this MacBook and when it was made. It might seem confusing that a computer that came out in 2015 would only be able to run OS X Mavericks, but sure enough, if you try to install any other operating system, it doesn't take it. It won't do anything with that. And that basically indicates that this would have been in the testing phase when OS X Mavericks was current. So up until the end of 2014 when Yosemite came out. Now it's at this point that I need to thank the guy that made this whole video possible, Apple Demo. He arranged the purchase of this MacBook and helped me out with a ton of the information in this video. So one of the first things that we did was examine two specific numbers. The first is the logic board model number. On a prototype, it ends in the number that corresponds to the prototype revision, usually somewhere around five to 10 for the prototypes that make it out into the wild. But this particular MacBook Pro has a logic board revision number of dash zero one, meaning this is the first of its kind. This could very well be the very first version of the Force Touch trackpad before even the 12 inch MacBook that came out before this device's final version. One of the other things Apple Demo helped me deduce about this computer stems from all of the stickers and markings around the device. On the bottom case where one would normally expect to find model information, we just see that everything is blanked out with X's. So all the internal information is found on these stickers. First off, the serial number appears on a few stickers around the device, like this one on the side, that appears to be in Comic Sans font? Really? It's kind of weird. Anyway, we ran the serial number through an internal database and it spit out March 2014 as the date of creation. Next, I tried booting into single user mode to check if there was any information about the kernel. Did you catch that? I sure didn't, but apparently what that shows was a kernel revision of August 17th, 2014. That's the date this kernel was signed, and boy is that early. With a manufacturing date from the serial number of March 2014 and the most recent kernel, so the most recent testing done in August of 2014, that is almost a full year before this MacBook Pro actually came out in its final version in mid-2015. So in development terms, especially given that the 2015 MacBook Pro didn't even have a redesign, this is probably as early as it gets. And that explains a lot of the weirdness with the configuration. They borrowed a CPU from the late 2013 MacBook Pro, then they took RAM that was being used in an iMac at the time, and then they put it with an SSD that they pulled out of the existing MacBook Pros because the 2015s ended up actually being faster and I checked the model number on the SSD and it matches the older generation NVMe drives. It's really just a cobbled together bunch of random parts that was used just to fill up a space so they could test out that trackpad. If we take a look at the palm rest, we can mine even more information about the prototype. For example, we can see that this is machine number 175 and the main signifies that this was the main machine of development for this configuration, the 2015 MacBook Pro. So this was the primary test device as Apple was working on developing the Force Touch trackpad. The purple sticker here looks a little bit more ambiguous. It's handwritten with some seemingly random numbers. Apple Demo got in touch with an engineer friend and we think we were able to get to the bottom of it. The measurements, VEH, peak VEH, and LCR refer to the calibration of the force touch sensors. 
This gives us some behind the scenes look into how Force Touch was actually being tested and honed in. And when this machine is booted, you can tell that they were really working on the most basic aspect of it at this point. It's pretty crazy to think about 175 of these machines being built and then tested, 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 and tested again, and then destroyed. Apple doesn't keep prototypes around, they get recycled and broken down, except for this one. Somehow, seven years later, this one not only survived, but made it out into the wild, against all odds. Apple probably would have been pretty angry if this got out into the public back in 2014, but now there's not really a whole lot you can do with it. So yeah, this is not the sort of device that you're gonna be buying and using every day and bragging to your friends about how your daily is a prototype. It doesn't really do anything at all, but it is a really cool piece of history to have, a peek behind the scenes at how Apple was developing the technology that we now have in every single MacBook. And if you think that's cool too, then you might as well subscribe because clearly we agree on a lot of things. So with that, I'd like to thank you guys so much for watching. Again, big thanks to Apple Demo for getting me hooked up with this device. And I will see you guys in the next video.